So I'm Jason Drazza with Wisconsin Whitetail, and today I'm going to talk to you about steps to food plot success and how to start food plots for beginners. Uh, step number one would be location and access. You don't want to be walking across your food plot to get to your stand. You're leaving a trail of scent right to your stand. Um, you want to make sure your um, food plots are in areas you can access in and out easy without disturbing much, much land and disturbing much deer during the hunting season. And you want to make sure your food plots are getting enough sun because pretty much all food plot species like full sun. But if you're in the woods and a little kill plot, those are usually the best spots to kill mature bucks, not these open fields like this. Those areas are the best for clover or rye, winter rye, cereal rye, any like species like that that can handle a lot of browse and can do well in the shade. You can do some research on what does well in shade, but brassicas do not. Brassicas and <coughs> brassicas, beans and corn need full sun. So location access is step number one. All right, so step number two now would be site prep. Whether it's a small food plot in the woods or one acre field, the best thing you can always do is spray because spraying off all the weeds, eliminating, eliminating all that competition will also cause less weeds to be in your food plot after planting too. And it makes it easier to work up the ground. And that brings us to step number three now, and that is uh, soil prep and seed bed prep. Um, if, if you have a tractor with a disc or a tractor with a tiller, that's like the best thing you can use. But I know that everyone does not have uh, access to one of them, but basically anybody that, that's putting in their own food plots or owns their own land is going to have an ATV. So you can buy a real nice ATV disc, or the Groundhog Max is a smaller ATV disc that works really well too. Um, so basically any means you have of breaking up ground and loosening up the soil is a very important step because when you just seed and, I mean, spray and seed, or spray and burn exposing the soil I mean I've even done that it's just you don't seem to get the best germination as if you would if, if you were to break up the ground and then seed because then the seeds I think they just work their so their, they work their way better in the ground um, I'm by no means an expert on food plots by the way I've only been planting food plots for two years now the amount of information I've learned from planting and for working ground and planting two years of food plots is just amazing and I have a lot. I have a lot more to learn. And uh, overseeding is a very common mistake. And because uh, basically, these brassicas are probably brassicas are the most most uh, commonly overseeded crop. You can tell this is a pretty big brassica plant. Look at these leaves on here. It all came from one little tiny seed, the size of a clover seed. So brassicas are very easy to overseed. You just got to make sure you're not cranking out too much. Kind of just use your own judgment kind of looking at how many seeds you got on the ground and take a note if they grow well they should get about this big so one little seed will produce this whereas clover and um, like rye grass and cereal rye and winter rye those you could just seed like crazy because those plants don't really get that big any plant that gets big is gonna be a one that gets overseed more overseeded more commonly so I hope this helped guys well that's about it I hope you learned something from this video and hopefully your food pots turn out well in the future and uh, this isn't as hard as it seems, guys. All it takes is a little bit of common sense, some knowledge, and lots of hard work. And just like anything you do in life, the more you do something, the better you're going to get at it. Uh, this is all a learning experience. In the two years I've been planting food plots, I've learned so much. And I'm probably going to continue to learn so much. So a lot more is coming ahead. So please take a look at our channel. There should be a link in the description below. Or you can search Wisconsin Whitetail on YouTube.